Okay class, today we're in section 8.1, add and subtract polynomials. Before, you added and subtracted integers. Now, you will add and subtract polynomials. Key vocabulary, monomial, degree, polynomial, leading coefficient, binomial, and trinomial. Okay, in that, we have five examples in this particular lesson. It's going to be important that you read because I'm going, to be, I'm going to be forced to augment and explain the examples only. But to start you off, a monomial is a number, a variable, or the product of a number and one or more variable with whole number exponents. The degree of a monomial is the sum of the exponents of the variables in the monomial. The degree of a non-zero constant term is zero. The constant zero does not have a degree. Okay, now please read and become familiar with this table and the various examples that is given. Monomial, its degree, and what's considered not to be a monomial, and the reason. Okay, monomial, 10, degree, zero. Monomial, 3x, degree, one, that's like saying x to the first power. Monomial, one half times a times b squared. Degree, three, a to the first power times b to the second power. One plus two is three. Monomial, a negative 1.8 times m to the fifth. Degree, five. Not a monomial. 5 plus x. A sum is not a monomial. 2 divided by n. A monomial cannot have a variable in the denominator. That's the n. 4 to the a. A monomial cannot have a variable exponent. x to the negative 1. The variable must have a whole number exponent. A polynomial is a monomial or sum of monomials, each called a term of the polynomial. The degree of a polynomial is the greatest degree of its terms. When a polynomial is written so that the exponents of the variables decrease from left to right, the coefficient of the first term is called the leading coefficient. 2 times x cubed plus x squared minus 5x plus 12 is written with the highest degree first, then the smaller, then the smaller. So 3, 2, 1, 0. So when this happens, the leading coefficient is 2. The highest degree in this case is 3. 3, 2, uh, 1, 0. So 3 is the highest. And the constant term is 12. That's the number sitting without a variable. Example 1. Rewrite a polynomial. Write 15x minus x to the third power plus 3 so that the exponents decrease from left to right. Identify the degree and leading coefficient of the polynomial. Solution. Consider the, uh, the degree of each of the polynomial's terms. 15x, that's degree 1. Negative x to the third, that's degree 3. Plus 3, that's degree 0. That's a constant. The polynomial can be written, can be written as negative x to the third plus 15x plus 3. The greatest degree is 3, so the degree of the polynomial is 3. And the leading coefficient is a negative 1. So once again, you put them in order. 3, in this case, next will be 1 and then 0. The leading coefficient, negative 1. There's a 1 between that negative sign and the x cubed, because all you see is one x cubed there. Binomials and trinomials. A polynomial with two terms is called a binomial. A polynomial with three terms is called a trinomial. Example two, identify and classify polynomials. Tell whether the expression is a polynomial. If it is a polynomial, find its degree and classify it by number of its terms. Classify it by the number of its terms. 
Otherwise, tell why it is not a polynomial. Expression nine. Is it a polynomial? Yes. Classify the degree and number of terms. Zero degree monomial. 2x squared plus x minus 5. Is it a polynomial? Yes. Classify the degree and number, a number of terms. Second degree trinomial. That's the highest value right there. 6 times n to the fourth minus 8 to the nth power. Is it a polynomial? No. A variable in the exponent. Expression n to the negative 2 minus 3. Is it a polynomial? No. No negative exponents. Expression 7 times b to the first times c to the third plus 4 times b to the first, excuse me, times b to the fourth times c to the uh, first. Is it a polynomial? Yes. Classify by degree and number of terms. Fifth degree binomial. All right, now for those of us who may be confused, here's why this polynomial is a fifth degree binomial. All right, let's look at the terms. 7b times c to the third is really 7 to the 0, b to the 1, c to the third. 0 plus 1 plus 3 is 4. 4 times b to the 4th times c, that's really 4 to the 0, b to the 4th, c to the 1st. Uh, 0 plus 4 plus 1, that's 5. That's why it is a 5th degree polynomial. Adding polynomials. To add polynomials, add like terms. You can use vertical or horizontal format. Primarily, from here on out, we're going to use horizontal format, but either one is fine. The one I'm, the one I'm used to seeing is horizontal format. Example three, add polynomials. Find the sum. A, two times x to the third power minus five x squared plus x plus two times x to the second power plus x to the third minus one. Solution for A, vertical format. Align like terms and vertical columns. So therefore, the cubes would go together. The squares would go together. The x, there's nothing else with it, so it's by itself. And the negative 1, there's nothing else with it. There's no, uh, no other single number with it, so it's also by itself. 2x cubed plus x cubed would give you 3x cubed. A negative 5x squared plus 2x squared, you're left with a negative 3x squared. Plus x plus 0, that's x. And then 0 plus a negative 1 is a negative 1. Okay, b is 3x squared plus x minus 6 plus x squared plus 4x plus 10. Now we're going to show you b using the horizontal format. Group like terms and simplify. All right, so here are two terms. This is the first term, trinomial. Second term, also a trinomial. So I'm going to go from here to right here. 3x squared plus x squared is 4x squared. 1x plus 4x is 5x. A negative 6 plus 10 is a positive 4. A negative 6 plus 10 is a positive 4. And we have our answer. Here, they're making sure that you understand it by grouping the like terms. The x squares go together, the x's go together, and the constants go together. Okay, example four, subtract polynomials. I'm going to show you this using the horizontal method because it's easier to understand, understand how to um, distribute the negative sign. So find the difference. They give us four squared plus five minus this whole term here. So minus a negative two n squared plus two n minus four. Now, before I do anything, I'm going to distribute the negative. So a negative times a negative, that gives me a positive. A negative times a positive, that gives me a negative 2n right there. And then a negative times a negative is a positive, so that gives me a positive 4. So once again, negative times a negative, that becomes a positive 2n squared. Negative times a positive, that becomes a negative 2n. 
and a negative times a negative, that becomes a positive 4. So now I'm going to go from here to right here. All right, now what's 4n squared plus 2n squared? That's 6n squared. What's 5 plus 4? That's 9. And then what is a negative 2n when you have nothing else to add to it but 0? That's going to end up being a negative 2n. So there's my answer right there. Okay, now for b, here's b right here. They already got it worked out horizontally. So I got 4x squared minus 3x plus 5 minus 3x squared minus x minus 8. I'm going to distribute my negative sign first. So a negative 1 times a positive 3x squared becomes a negative 3x squared. That becomes a negative 3x squared. A negative 1 times a negative, negative times a negative, that becomes a positive. So that's a positive x. And then a negative times a negative again, that also becomes a positive. So that's a positive 8. Okay, here they grouped for you. But I'm going to go from here to right here. So I got 4x squared minus 3x squared. That's going to be x squared. I got a negative 3x plus an x. That's going to be a negative 2x. I got a positive 5 plus a positive 8. That's going to be a positive 13. Example 5. Solve a multi-step problem. Baseball attendance. Major League Baseball teams are divided into two leagues. During the period 1995 through 2001, the attendance in and A in thousands at National and American League Baseball games, respectively, can be modeled by N for the National League is equal to 488 times T squared plus 5,430 times T plus 24,700. And for the American League, a negative 318 times T squared plus 3,040 3, times T plus 25,600. And by the way, that should have been a negative up there if I didn't say that. Solution, step one, add the models for the attendance in each league to find a model for M, the total attendance in thousands. So what they do is they take the two equations, National League, American League, and then we're going to add all the like terms. Here we grouped. That's to make it easier for those of us who may be confused to follow along. But other than that, all you're doing is matching up terms. So here we got a negative 488 T squared plus a negative 318 T squared. So a negative 488 plus a negative 318 would give you a negative 806 times T squared. So now you got 5,430 times T plus 3,040 times T. You add those together since they're both positive and you come out with 8,470T. Then you take the two constants, 24,700 plus 25,600, and you're going to add those together, and that's going to give you 50,300. Okay, step two, substitute 6 for T in the model because 2001 is 6 years after 1995. So M is equal to a negative 806 times 6 squared plus 8,470 times 6 plus 50,300. And that's congruent to about 72,100. So about 72,100,000 people attended Major League Baseball games in 2001. 